Battery Hasher 4.0. I'll need this, I'll need this, and parts off this. Radio work commitments kicked in and I didn't really have enough time to film the, um, the making of Battery Hasher 4.0 but I reckon this is going to be the final version of it. I'm uh, really happy as you can see I removed all the fans at the back. So I'll be using these three Hynix cards, Hynix or whatever you say for the memory I'll be putting them over. As you can see I've sort of taken a bit of time and effort this time to do some cable management trying to make it look sexy. That takes a lot more effort than you'd think for me. Uh, even down here I've sort of got everything bunched together so I've got three six millimeter square cables one from the video cards at the top and then i got another one for the risers and then i got another one for the main board there and down there which you can hardly see i've tried to sort of sheath it all up now i was going to sheath this lot up and sort of try and hide it and make it look all super sexy but what i found was you can see there those cables are mangled and practically melted together now i don't know why that these were all new cables from a good power supply with a good power source so i wasn't sharing anything that's the only cable so maybe you've got to check every cable all the time and change them out but who knows so that is the reasoning why that is yellow not sexy braided gold or something <laughs> There we go, the final result. I am extremely happy with the way that it's turned out. Everything is laid out nicely. Of course, I haven't tested it. Unfortunately, I don't have um, that lot all hooked up yet because that was the plan. I was going to have all that hooked up so I had 48 volts. So I could actually run this up here, so I'll have to take it down to the battery shed, hook it all in, and see if she works for the first time. That's going to be the, that's going to be the deciding factor she works first time or not. Let's see if we can give you a live view of it actually turning on. So if indeed it does turn on. Radio. Is it at all justified that I'm a little bit nervous? The power button is not turning it on. Let's have a look at this. We've got power there. We've got a little, little, little light. We've got no smoke coming out. Blue LED. I turn it on. She starts to turn on then she turns off again. That's a brand new Pico board, the power switch is in, nothing. I tested the board before I put it in and it worked with a normal power supply. I tested the CPU, all the video cards are working, the risers were out of wood, no one working. Time to pull it all back apart again I guess. Right here back up in the workshop I've had to disconnect the Pico and the 12 volt to the motherboard and I've plugged in a fossil fueled powered power supply. So turn that on and guess what happens the fan starts spinning so there mustn't be enough power in that pico it's a 160 watt to run that i3 processor my options are i could use the other board that i was using to mine with uh, so ace uh, what is it asus prime h270 plus or i could just use a cheaper motherboard which i'm more inclined to use because i can use that in an eight card rig and this one i can't so that's just got a little riser board because it doesn't have enough PCI Express slots. A riser card, and let's try this one. Out with the old, in with the older. A few minutes later, the new board's in, nice and easy. Doesn't look too horrible. Radio tube is many, many hours later, and one, two, three different motherboards that I have tried, as well as a combination of different risers and cables and adapters and whatever else. Battery Hasher 5.0, which is what I'm calling this now because it's come so far since I started this whole project 24 hours ago. Uh, it took me many hours of troubleshooting yesterday trying to work out. All, all the things, it's all second hand, so you know, I had multiple problems, but you get that right. It's now hooked up to the Batrium, so that's actually turning on and off properly the way it should. It's all working. I have had to go all the way and go to the Asus Prime motherboard. Now I seem to be having another inconsistent issue. Uh, at the moment, the battery voltage is actually too low, um, it's at 52 
volts so it turns off at 53 volts or turns on at 53 volts so it's shut down at the moment current problem i'm having is it the batrium does its thing and it'll turn it back on again but it'll turn on one card or it might turn on these two cards or it might turn on these two cards or it might turn on only one card or it could turn on all three cards i know i've had problems again with this cheap second hand motherboard that's been in a mining rig for like two two years or something whatever however long it's been it has been well used that motherboard and it's always had problems so i'm going to replace that with a brand new one in the next coming days and see what happens if that gets it a little bit more reliable or it could be just can't get enough power out of that device enough clean power so maybe i might have to go back to battery hashes 3.0 and just put two cards in i really want to have three cards but that in itself has presented another new problem and that new problem if you have take a look on nanopool.org this is battery hasher all right so this is where I was doing all the testing and starting to get it all running and turning it on and turning it off constantly for hours on end yesterday. And this is when it sort of started getting it working and this is where I got the USB working for the wireless. So it run for a few hours. So that is so that is 10 past 8 to uh, 20 to 9 or something at night. And what happened was at this point here, the batteries went underneath my pre-configured limit of 20 what is it 12, 50 53 volts there we go 53 volts there so that is how it turns on and off and it's turned off at the moment in low shunt volt because it's 52.2 volts so and i've also got up here to 1000 seconds which is 16.6 .6 minutes and it's the maximum that the bathroom can do it at the moment so it's got to, on start and stop, for 16.6 .6 minutes, it has to be below the 53 volt, right? So if it goes below 53 volts and then comes back to 53.1 volts, that 16.6 .6 minutes starts again from zero. So it has to go past that point for that period of time. Now what happens is, because I've got three cards running, and it's um, I'm not actually sure what sort of watts, but I know the amps coming from the wall is about 12 amps, uh, at fi at 53 volts or whatever the voltage is and then what happens it turns the miner off and then the voltage comes back again now in the case last night as you can see uh, we're only uh, hashing at 30.9 mega hashes for another what's that uh, 22 23 so for another hour it started mining again because it was drawing less power from the wall uh, it was able to stay on for a lot longer without that voltage sag, so to speak. So that in itself is going to be a problem because I need it to turn off. Once, I, once it turns off, I need it to actually turn off and not come back on again. So on that alone, I might have to go back to two cards. Righty, hey, tubers. So battery hasher 5.0 is kind of working. Still needs a bit of work, I think. I need to learn some more stuff about how those converters work. I'm pretty sure it's not the motherboard, I'm pretty sure it's that converter that's the problem. But if you've got any suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. If you got this far, give me one of these, or if you really hate it, give me one of them. Thanks very much for tuning in again, guys. And I shall see you on the next one. Cheers.